Kembali ke Swagbox CNBC Indonesia bersama saya Safrina Sution dan kini kita akan lanjutkan kembali dialog kita bersama dengan Martin Terpilowski, founder and investor of Bumi Farta Technology. Martin, thank you so much for still being with us here in CNBC. Thank you. So, tell us about BVD. What what your company is doing? How do you run your company? And how is the journey so far? Well, it's uh, it's it's challenging. So we are. Uh, Uh, a big data location analytics company. Mm. And for, for people experts, it's called geospatial software. Mm. Now, I say for people experts, till six years ago, I'd never heard of geospatial software myself. Mm. So I'm not a techie, you know, I'm an ex-finance guy. So basically, we, I was looking at opportunities in Indonesia. I knew a few people here. And uh, I did a lot of research actually before I started. And we decided to look at this opportunity because we just looked at, in America, there's like 70 companies doing this. And in Europe, there's many companies, but no one doing it here. Mm. Now, the challenge of doing a blue ocean product is yeah. that everybody like looks at you at first as like, you're kind of crazy because no one's done it before, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, we, so we help all kinds of companies make better decisions based on analytics data. So we can combine their data and our data. Um, examples, um, copy Janji Jiwa. Mm. Um, You know, they were one of my first clients. They want to know where to open new stores. Mm. Our software will predict where they can open new stores. Mm. We've dealt with Kraft Heinz. We locate, we tell them, you know, for the um, FMCG market, where their white space is, where, which areas are they not sending salespeople to at the moment, mm. right? For the government, um, ATR, BPN, we help monetize their software. So we monetize their data. Mm. We help visualize their data. Mm. Uh, we've worked also with BSSN before. Mm. Um, we, we work with uh, Telcom Property, mm. McDonald's. So uh, we've got, it's, it's a B2B business, yeah. but it's an, we're an industry agnostic. So every kind of company needs, everyone talks about digital transformation and big data. To be absolutely honest, most people are using data in spreadsheets and the yeah. digital transformation here is still nowhere near there. It's, it's a lot of talk, but an app is not digital transformation. Yeah. What we are building is deep technology Um, which it is a challenge because it's not been there before. And, you know, digitalization is something that some people here are still scared yeah. of. They see it as a, it'll take their job. Yeah. So a lot of companies, you know, I do get blocked by people, both in government and private sector. Mm -hmm. They see this as like a threat to their job. Mm. But at the end of the day, you can't fight it forever. At the end of the day, people all over the world use big data now. So they don't talk about it, they use it to make better decisions. Mm. So in Indonesia, as I said, we're the first, um, we're doing what we do. We're, there is contractors, which are smaller companies that buy software from the US right. and buy software from China and right. build on top of it. But as, that, as in building deep technology in Indonesia, there's mm. very few companies, okay. actually. There's ourselves. There's a company called Nordflux that you've probably never yeah. heard of as well, but they're great guys. Um, shout out to those guys because they don't get much coverage <laughs> okay. because they're doing, they, they plan to build a proper business and mm. they're not you know, getting all the coverage from the tech media that's owned by the VCs. Yeah. So it, it, you don't hear about these people as much, but they're a profitable business. Yeah. Um, and they don't have all these problems now. They're right. not laying loads of people off now. So yeah, what we, what we do is that big data analytics, um, are helping all kinds of companies and government make better decisions. Right. And for BVT, it has run for four and a half years, yes. yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So we're now talking about sustainability and also fundamental of a business. So yeah. how do you run your business? How do you fundraise and how do you get your investor? It seems that the funding comes from uh, unusual circles. Yeah, it, it's very... It's we, we, we received that so information. So it's unusual business, yeah. So, so basically, um, you know, I, I knew very early, this isn't a venture capital kind of business, right? It's, it was always set up on sustainability. Growth at all costs was never an interest to us, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're all a bit older, we've all had professional careers, successful careers before. So we had a very different plan of what we wanted to achieve. <clears throat> so day, in day one, we were all, we, of course, up front there was a lot of cost because we're building software. So there's no clients for two years, right, for starters. There's no revenue at all at first. For the first two years. Yeah, basically, because you're building software from scratch, right? Yeah. Then you've got COVID. So it's been a very, very challenge, actually, because particularly in a lot of um, FMCG, sorry, F&B and retail, COVID just yeah. stopped even, no point even talking anymore, right? Yeah. But we, we, we then branched out into FMCG, we branched out into government. So we always set up on a sustainability model. Um, we spent a lot of money, but a fraction of what B2C businesses have spent. I mean, when I hear about people spending 80, 100, 200 million dollars, I don't understand. I could take this globally for 100 million dollars, mm. right? So I don't know where the money goes. Again, this is very questionable where all this money goes because <laughs> I built this, I spent a lot of money, but nowhere near that amount. And we actually have IP. Mm. We built software. And by the, by the next six months, 
we will be able to sell this software into other countries. Mm. So we believe we'll be the first Indonesian company ever to sell deep tech software overseas. Mm. So coming back to who the investors are, for the first two years, it was just myself, actually. Um, my own money from my previous career. I don't have family money, but I had a decent career before. Okay. So I put my own money in. And then after two years, I talked to my personal network, who are a combination, but a lot of investment bankers, actually. You know, some of the guys who run big hedge funds in Asia, um, some of the guys who work at the big banks, um, the, my close network, and they also invested. So we've invested, we have um, a few local family offices directly, mm -mm. but yeah, kind of the people who are looking at longer term, people who are not looking to pass the bag, people who have yeah. a 10 year outlook, who have enough money already, um, but, but looking at a, yeah, they, they're, their attitude is very similar to mine. Yeah. Now we are talking to some of the bigger guys in the future, so we may take, but it won't be the venture capital, it'll be more private equity. Yeah. Um, some of the banks have private um, business now. I've got a lot of connections in the investment banks. Yeah. So we are looking at that for the future maybe, to take okay. this regionally, but so far, no, we funded this ourselves. Okay, yeah, so you're putting a lot of high bet for BVT because you, you mentioned before that this is your own money and then yep. you know, some of the money, yep. but you see the long term is always your goal and the fundamental business well, is always your Well, that's why it probably succeeds. Yeah, because it's, last my, for a generation. it's my own money and I don't take salaries. Yeah, and that's your right? So, so it's what, a different yeah, model. Why you know? do you believe with this technology so much and then how do you think this technology will transform the lives of people in Indonesia and how do you expand your business and technology probably overseas? Well, I can just look at you know, this kind of software is used in every other country. So eventually, I believe it will be used in this country as well. I think, you know, I, I do believe that there's a lot of potential to lift a lot of people up. There's a lot of, you know, chances to improve businesses, SMEs, everything by using big data. But at the moment, it's just like people seem to... I mean, the reason I bet on it big was because, you know, you have to make a decision. For me, if I throw 10... The idea of the venture capital world is go for 10 and hit one. But I don't even think they're going to do that. You know, if you look at if you look at overall, not just here, look in the US. I don't think they get ten in one in ten. Mm. So for me, it was more a case of really focus on something that I believe in and then push it. I've got a kind of you know, I turned up in in Tokyo when I was 23 with a blank piece of paper. So I've got a kind of a an aggressive attitude towards business. So once I went for it, I just won't won't back off. And I know that the people who are backing me as well, they totally believe in that as well. We because at the end of the day. Digitalization is something government desperately want. You know, digitalization mm -hmm. is one of the things which can end corruption. Let's be honest; it can end, it can stop a lot of corruption. Yeah. Digitalization. That's probably one of the probably yeah. one of the reasons people. You know, a lot of people. Maybe I'm not the most popular person in Indonesia, but our software can stop a lot. It can it can make sure the owners of companies are 100 percent sure that they're making the right decisions. Mm. Whereas I think at the moment they're not always making the right decisions. People are making decisions on their behalf to benefit them. You know what I mean? So mm. so I actually absolutely believe that. And also, I think it's been proven in, in four and a half years when Corona has existed, okay. we have 30 clients, mm -hmm. including some of the biggest companies inter internationally, yeah. some of the biggest companies in Indonesia, as I said, Kraft Heinz, McDonald's, Telcom Property, Janji yeah. um, GUI, XXI. So we, and, we, and there's others very close, which yeah. are even bigger. Right. Um, you know, we have relationships with big companies like Microsoft. Right. We, we basically are talking to all the big consultants about putting our software. If you talk to the big consultants here, they will tell you that one of the market right. gaps is what we do. And also the Indonesian government is trying to get local software. Well, we're the only people. So if they want to fulfill like one of the big banks or BUMN, want to, want to yeah. use local software, there is only us. There's, there's just so much potential. There is only us. So, so the reality is yeah. I can't talk about, you know, total addressable market yeah. size which is just made up in my yeah. opinion, what well, I can tell you is what I'm making already and I can, I can tell you what the yeah. growth is and what the potential is. It is a real struggle because you are trying to put something into right. a system that's not been there before. Yes, it's So there's very... huge pushback. Yeah. But once you get there, it works and the yeah. clients like it and the growth is there and yes. there's actual revenue. Wishing, Not, yeah. You know. we're, we're truly wishing BFT for a great success and also a lot of potentials coming <laughs> on. But, so. but, you know, the duration is, is already up. So we're going to talk probably further later okay. on that Thank segment. You. Thank you so much, Martin, for coming us here.